everybody. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Carrie. My husband Dale and I are the creators of the From Seed to Spoon mobile app. And if you haven't heard of that, you definitely need to check it out. We help walk you through over 100 different fruits, vegetables, and herbs and give you exact planting dates based on your nearest weather station. So it'll predict when your first frost is going to be, your last one, and give you exact planting dates and walk you through companion planting and pests and all of that. And we've we've been gardening now for ooh, since 2015, but whenever we first started, we had a lot of issues and we wanted to make an app to help make it easier for everybody else to get started also, to just make it easier for everybody. Today I was going to talk about seed starting and all about how to do it. First of all, why you should go about doing it and just some tips and tricks and take you along the process of starting your own transplants. So first of all, you may be asking, why should I care about seed starting? Because whenever Dale and I first started growing our own food, we, we started with transplants and we didn't necessarily do a lot of things from seed. We did a few, but we mostly got transplants from either our local nursery or our, you know, big box stores. And we, we still had some success, but I do notice a huge difference whenever you start your own seeds versus buying transplants from the store. These, um, the ones that you do are generally a lot healthier because you've been taking care of them, you've been babying them and walking them through every inch of their life. So you know exactly how they're doing. And also a huge thing too, is you get to pick your own varieties. So there are so many different varieties that you can choose from of different types of plants. And whenever you go to the store and you pick out transplants that have already been grown by somebody, you don't necessarily get to choose from a really good variety. And then of course, the obvious one of starting seeds will save you a whole lot of money because those transplants, whenever you buy them, they can really, you know, they can really add up quickly whenever you're paying three or $4 at least for each little plant. But if you pay three or four seeds per packet of seeds or three or $4 for a packet of seeds, you can really save a lot of money because that packet of seeds can give you, you know, a whole bunch of the different plants and sometimes last you longer than a season too. And lastly, I will just say too that starting your own seeds and just watching them grow from, you know, being a little tiny seed onto producing food for you, it's an amazing process. And I love including our kids on this. We have four kids and they love helping us in the garden. They help, they help us plant some seeds as well. They come and they join our YouTube channel sometimes and, and, uh, hang out with us and plant seeds and harvest and eat it all with us. And it's just, it's really fun to do. So today I thought that I would walk you through our whole process that we have of starting seeds and going through, and I'm going to show you some seedlings that I already have going and showing the process of um, thinning them down and why we do that and how we do that. And then go through up potting them as well, because these ones back here are due for that getting a bigger area. So there are many different ways to go about starting your own seeds indoors. And the way that I'm gonna show you today is through this biodome. And this is a park seed biodome. And we have just started using these for the first time this season. And I've already grown, uh, I, don't, I will show you here shortly, but I have grown a lot of baby seedlings already. Um, just by using these and they've been working really well for us. Our germination rates have been off the charts successful. So I'm going to keep using these. I'm going to show you guys this method. So there are other ways of starting seeds too, but this is just our preferred method that we have found this season that has been working so great for us. So I thought I would show you guys how I go about doing that today. So first of all, whenever you first open it up, it comes with these they're called sponges. They're just little little uh, pods that come and you put them into their spaces, into the little holes. But I'm gonna go through and I soak them first just to make sure that they are ready for planting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go through the process here. So I just laid them out flat here and then I have some water that I'm going to pour over them. I usually just do some warm water. I'm just pouring it in there. 
Let them soak for a little bit. And then while that's going, I have already picked out my seeds that I'm doing, but I do have my seeds starting, all of my seeds right here. I keep them all organized in here and we have them organized by cool season, we have herbs and then warm season as well. Today, I thought that I would plant some more cool season crops since it is still cool season. I, I have been starting some tomatoes and peppers and things like that also, but I thought that I would stick with more of the greens. We have some spinach, Swiss chard, kale, so I thought that we would plant some of that today. So while these are soaking, I'm gonna go through and go ahead and write out all of my labels. I always like to write these right before I plant them so that way Whenever I plant them, I can have them ready to go, and that way I don't forget. I'm notorious for that, so I'm just going to go through and make some labels. Okay, so now that I finished making all of my labels, and I told you there were a lot of different varieties, I have five different varieties of spinach that I'm going to be growing. And it's great because each one is unique in its own way, so I really like growing a variety. You can try different things. It's really fun. So I love seed starting that way. So now I have all those ready. I am going to get these pods put over into the biodome. And it doesn't matter if you get these all wet because you're just gonna be watering in here anyways. So you can let it drip to the bottom and it will start adding some moisture. Okay, now that I have all of this set up and ready to go, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to get started planting. So this one, this biodome here is a 40 cell biodome. And so there's eight rows. So I'm gonna do eight different varieties. So that way I just have one label for each row. And um, there's a bunch of different sizes of these biodomes. So if you're wanting something of, you know, that has less cells, they have bigger ones too that are jumbo size that are 18 cell. And then there's also, I have this one back here, which is a 60 cell too, and they have smaller areas. So they have a bunch of different sizes if you're looking for a different space. And these are perfect for small space because we are small space Saturday. As you see, I have this set up right here in my kitchen. So it's really nice. I just have one single grow light and then one of these biodomes right underneath. Works out perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do some spinach first. I have several different varieties. Like I said, this first one is a spinach tundra. And whenever I go through and plant, all I do is I just drop, you can see that there's some little holes here in these sponges. And I just drop two little seeds down in into the sponges. And it's really that simple. You could get away with doing one, but I'm just one of those people that I always like to have a backup. But I've had such a great germination rate that I've had to go through and thin them down just because like both of them have been sprouting for me, which is great. I love to have that problem. So I'm gonna get the label in. These are de decent sized seeds, so they're pretty easy to work with. These are ones that's easy for the kids to, to play with also and to come and plant.
so then I have a spinach with this one is a baby leaf I like that some of these have giant leaves of spinach whenever you grow them and some of them have smaller I really like to have a mixture of them whenever we're going out and harvesting and eating them in our salads it's really nice to have a mixture of of the two in different varieties And also I like having different types because I never know which one is going to do best in our climate that we have here. We are in zone seven in Oklahoma and we can have quite strange weather. <laughs> I'm sure everywhere can, right? But we have a lot of swings back and forth between hot and cold. And sometimes certain varieties do better with our, our weather here than others. So I like trying out different ones. And it makes it go faster too, already having these all ready to go. Okay, last spinach here. And this one is a space hybrid. And one of the great things too about using these little sponges you don't have to come behind and cover them up. These seedlings will just grow up these holes that are already made for you. Makes it so convenient. It is so easy to use these. Okay, I'm moving on to some kale varieties. I have two different kales. So that one I just planted was the dinosaur kale, which is our son's absolute favorite variety. It is a really easy way to get the kids involved in gardening is to have fun variety names like that. Like there is, we are growing a chocolate cherry tomato too, one of Park Seeds, and the kids were so excited to try that. It's a great way to get the kids involved. They get to pick out their own fun seeds. Okay, this last one, last but definitely not least, this is my personal favorite, the Swiss Chard Bright Lights. It is so pretty. If you've never grown this before, you definitely need to. It is the most beautiful Swiss Chard you will ever see. It has so many different colors and it is so beautiful. The kids love to eat it because it is so pretty too. So it's really good to have around because not only the kids love it, we love it. it tastes great. Okay, so now that I have all of them planted out, all I need to do is just make sure I get some water down here in the bottom, which I already did have a little bit just because they were really wet when I put them in. But I'm going to add some water here to the bottom of this. The great thing about these biodomes, and one key thing you want to make sure too when you are starting seeds, is that you are keeping it watered from below if at all possible, because having irrigation water from below, you're preventing mold issues, you're having healthier plants because their roots are growing down, and it's just, it's a lot better overall. So now that we have that set up, we're gonna put this lid on it. And what this lid right here does, it keeps this environment in here however we want it. So there's these vents on top, and I'm gonna make sure that these vents are closed so that way we are keeping inside of here as humid as possible while they're germinating. It keeps it super humid and then once the seeds come up, once they start coming up, I usually start to open up these vents and then once I see that all of them are up, I usually just take them off, kind of like I have back here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these closed and we're ready to go. These ones are good to go and get set under some grow lights. And also, now that I have all these planted, I want to make sure that I go through our app in the Garden Plus section, and I'm going to go in there and log that I started these seeds today. So that way, it will 
first of all, help me keep track of when I planted things because I'm planting things like every single day right now. And it'll help me keep track of that. It will give me estimated sprouting dates for when I can expect these to start to come up and also give me some expected harvest dates. And I can go through, there's also a section for logging photos and notes and things like that. Okay, so now I'm going to switch them out for this one. Bring this one up. And I'm gonna put these back here. I'm gonna have to raise that grow light a little bit because I had put the grow light down so that way it could be closer to these ones. Since these ones had all germinated, I will show you these. Look how good they look. They are looking amazing. I love these. So these ones, we had another mixture of some cool seasons. These ones I started probably about a week or so ago now. And it's a mixture of, let's see, we have artichokes, cauliflower, which I'm super excited about this cauliflower that I found. It's a graffiti. It's called cauliflower graffiti from Park Seed. And it's supposed to have this beautiful purple cauliflower in the middle. I'm so excited. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm always one to try like new and beautiful varieties. So I'm really excited to try that one. And then we have two different pop choys, kohlrabi and cabbage. So with these ones, as you can see, they're looking quite large. And this is a smaller biodome cell size. This is a 60 cell size which is perfect for these because they're not going to be in here very long. I'm going to go ahead and up pot them here soon, but first I'm going to go through and thin them down. So when I say thin them down, what I mean is go through and make sure. So if I don't know if you guys can see that, that there are multiple seedlings in there, some baby plants, because I did just like how I planted this one back here. I put two seeds in each little hole that was drilled into the sponges. So that way I made sure that they did germinate. And then, so now I just have to come behind. I'm gonna take some scissors and then I'm going to cut the extra plant off. And it's really important to make sure for the health of your seedling that you're gonna be keeping that you use scissors instead of pulling. Cause if you do pull, it tugs at the roots of the other ones and it can really hurt the other plant. And I've also gotten questions before from people about why you even need to worry about thinning down plants. So I just wanted to address that too. Um, it's really important to make sure you only have one plant per section just so they get the adequate amount of nutrients needed, water, and they have plenty of root, root area to grow. If they are struggling and fighting for all that, they're not gonna do as well and both plants are gonna struggle and you won't get as good of a harvest. But at this stage, if we come through and we thin them down to just one, they will do a whole lot better. And if you're like me, where you worry about the, the plant that you're taking away, what I do, if they are big enough, sometimes I use them as microgreens and I eat them in the kitchen. Um, other times I can take them, I mean, I'm sure you guys can see our, our chickens running around outside and our pigs, we have lots of them running around. Um, but they enjoy some greens as well. So I will give them some cuttings also if I have a bunch of extra ones too. So whenever I go through here, I'm going to try and find like the healthiest looking one or the one that is growing more towards the center. And then I'm going to separate them and make sure that I only cut the one. And pull it off the side. So I wanna make sure that I do that for all of these. So when you come through and thin them down, you want to make sure that you are first of all separating them and making sure that you are only cutting the one because you would be devastated if you cut both of them. So we want to make sure we pick the healthiest looking one or the one that's more in the center and then snip and pull away and then over here.
You just want to be really careful that you don't disturb the other one's root system. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to finish thinning all these down and I'm going to take them out to our transplanting area and I'm going to show you how we go about up potting. So I'll see you all in just a second. This is our outdoor grow area and this is in our garage that we have. So pretty much any small space. So if you have a smaller area, you can still fit like one of these grow racks in. I've seen people put these in their living room. We used to have one in our office area and I mean, it, it, we just put it in the corner and it worked great, kept it out of the way. So it's really good for keeping a lot of seed starting areas, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. That's the beauty of starting seeds also. So these wire shelves that we got, we, ha we got these, you can get them either at any big box store. You can also find them used a lot on like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, places like that. So any way that we can try and keep our cost down, we try to do that too. But on each row, as you can see, we have over here, so we have them kind of separated out. So we have our warm season over here and our cool season. I know not everybody has this much space, but you can also do like one row for heat and one row for the cold season. But up here, so we have these huge heat mats right here to help the peppers and tomatoes germinate. So the heat mats aren't necessary for starting some of these seeds, but it definitely helps. It increases the germination process and makes it go faster. So up here I have the peppers and then down here I have our tomatoes. And both of them love the heat and they love the heat mats. So I try to keep them on the heat mats while they're inside. And then also on these, I have some grow, well, these aren't necessarily grow lights. These are just shop lights that we have some LED bulbs in. And we are just using these lights for germination and not for the flowering process. So if you are just doing it like this, you could use shop lights and not necessarily spend the extra money for grow lights. But if you are going to be growing year round and want to grow something to flower indoors, then you will need the actual grow lights. One thing I also really like are these pulleys that are over here. So these are hooked to our shop lights right here. And then it's really helpful to lower them and raise them up for the different heights that we have. So as the seedlings grow, I raise this up and as they, or not as they get smaller, but <laughs> if I want to lower it, it's easy to lower it too. So they're, they're really easy to use. I love, I love having those because before we had those, we were having to like mess with little chains and stuff. This was so much easier. We found these on Amazon and it was a life changer for us. So also included in our setup, we have a box fan set up on both seed starting stations that we have. And we run those whenever our seedlings start to get a little bit bigger and right before we start the hardening off process. So it helps the plants kind of get used to the outside environment that they're going to be in, especially here where we are. We are in Oklahoma. It is very, very windy. And so we like to run the fan, kind of help them get used to their environment that they're going to go into. The fan also helps too if you are having any issues with moldy seedlings on the top, the fan will help to prevent first the mold from happening, or if you do have mold issues, it helps to get rid of it too. And all of our stations that we have here, we have, well, we have biodomes, and then we have the ones where I'm going to be up potting today too. But these are all ones that have irrigated areas on the bottom, so that way we can always water from below. And it's really important, especially at this stage, not to water from up top because you can really cause a lot of issues with mold, with gnats, with, you know, unhealthy seedlings. So you want to make sure that you're watering from below. It'll help make them stronger and it'll prevent those issues from happening as well. So whenever I do go about watering, again, I want to make sure that I always water from below. And then I always, in this area, I always have a bucket of water filled right here. So that way it's either at least room temperature. Whenever I fill it, I try to make sure it's warm, warmer water. It tries to help or it helps to prevent the seedlings from being shocked with cold water. So whenever I have like 
you know, water that's air temperature. It, it really is the best for the plants. So I just take a cup and then pour into the tray area until I have a few inches or so. And then the sponges right here and under here too will soak up the water too. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to getting these seedlings that we just brought out here up potted into this area. So these little pots are just enough bigger that I feel like they'll get enough, enough bigger that I can start the hardening off process and take them outside before they get too big for these ones. And these cups right here, I've already gone ahead and filled with some seed starter mix. So I always use either a one that I can buy, a seed starting mix that I buy, or I go ahead and make my own too. It just kind of depends on what I have around. And if I do make my own, I do equal parts of peat moss or coconut core. Those two are interchangeable. And then also a equal mixture of vermiculite or perlite. So if you combine those and do an equal mixture into these pots right here, that'll be perfect for your seed starting mix also. So you'll know that these seedlings over here are ready for up potting. I know, I'm sure you can see all of these roots that are coming down right here. So whenever you see roots coming down from the side or through the bottom, that's how you know that it is ready to move into a bigger space. It is outgrowing this little area that it's in. And these are really easy to pull out of the biodome. You can either just pull them straight from the top, which is what I usually do, or there's also holes from the bottom where you can poke your finger up and make it go up if you're having any issues with it. But usually they pop right out and really easy to do. But all I do when I go about transplanting these is I already have my seed starting mix in there. And I try not to fill it up all the way until afterwards so that way I have plenty of space in there for my new plant that's coming in. And then I put it in here. And then I'm going to come around it and put some extra of the seed starting mix. So that way it is filled to the top. And that's really all there is to transplanting or to up potting these right here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these ones off right here. So I'm not going to go through that whole process and, and do all of them for you guys, but I just wanted to demonstrate just how easy it is to up pot from these tiny, this tiny area right here up to a bigger size. So that way they have more space and they can grow a little bit more before they go outside. And that brings me to the hardening off process. So a common mistake that people make with their baby seedlings is they get really excited, the weather's beautiful, it's really nice out, and they wanna go outside and take their babies and transplant them. Well, you don't really want to do that right away. And this applies too for any transplants that you get from say like a nursery or the big box store and all that too. You always wanna go through this hardening off process, which it usually lasts about a week. And during that week, you just want to slowly get them used to the environment that they're going to be in. You don't want to shock them because, I mean, they've been in here all of their lives. So they've been sitting under grow lights in perfect conditions, perfect humidity, maybe a little bit of wind from the span, but that's about it. So when they go outside, they're going to be exposed to the sun. They're going to be exposed to all sorts of different critters too. And it's just way different than they're used to. So going through this hardening off process really helps to make them as successful as possible before you transplant them. So you'll know that they are ready by first of all, checking and making sure that your weather is going to be good for the plants that you're putting out. So for like these cool season crops that I have up here, I can go ahead and start the hardening off process now. So I know that these plants are big enough. I'll pull one of these out. For you and I'm going to do a close-up on it so that way you can kind of see whenever you see that they are at least an inch or two tall and they have 
two sets of true leaves. Then you'll know that they are ready to be transitioned outdoors. So these ones, I'm gonna start this process of hardening off. I'm going to let them go outside just for a couple hours during the first day. And I'm gonna put it in an area that is maybe some filtered sun and not full sun yet, just to kind of get them used to the outside first. And then I'll, I'll bring them back inside, bring them in here. And then the next day I'll do the same thing. Each day I will slowly expand and let them get more sun and spend more time outdoors before they go about staying out there all day. And whenever you do this, it's really important to be, be on the lookout for things like stray cats who may want to mess with them, um, mice, I mean, anything like that. So make sure that they are gonna be in a safe environment outside. We like to put ours Pretty much we put we go take ours to where we are going to be transplanting them so that way they get to they get used to their home before they go out there but um, we take them out there which is behind a fence it is safe and from critters and if we're worried about wild birds or anything coming in too we can put them under some bird netting or something like that but usually we have really good luck so like I said, we go through that process each day for about a week, just getting them gradually more used to the environment. And then on that last day, you can go ahead and transplant them out if they're doing good. And that way it helps give them the best chance of success when they go out into the garden. And this is usually the time also where we go about starting to transition, watering them from above or more like from the sides too and try to get their roots to expand and grow more to the sides also. So it'll start to take up more of the area that we are transplanting it into. And um, at this point, you can also go ahead and add compost into your soil. What the mixture we use out in our garden is exactly the seed starting mix for a third of it. So we do a third, the coconut core or um, peat moss, and then a third, vermiculite or perlite, and then a third of compost. And we find that that compost does a great job at fertilizing. But if you find that it needs some little extra help, you can do an organic, maybe like fish fertilizers or things like that. Also, we're a big component of all of the organic methods. And if you are curious too about knowing what different types of fertilizers there are for different types of plants, because different types of plants need different fertilizers, in our app, there's a section in there for fertilizing, and it talks about, you know, which, um, which fertilizers you should use and what frequency you should be fertilizing if it's needed. I also want to mention also, before you go this hardening off process, it is so important to make sure that it is the right time frame to be putting your plants outdoors too. And within our app, this is where our app comes in so handy. It has under each plant detail pages, it'll pull in the exact planting dates for your location. So the dates are pulled from your nearest weather station. They have over 100 years worth of different frost data. And so it averages out when it thinks your last frost date should be. So it'll pull in the dates where you should be safe to transplant and it'll give you a time frame. So make sure you check that out so you know when you can plant them out there so that way your plants will be safe. And along that same line too, there is a weather tab too that is down on the bottom that will tell you if there is a predicted freeze coming up within the next seven days. So that way you know if your plants either need protection whenever you first put them out there, or if you maybe just wanna wait an extra day or two before you put them back out there. So that way you get a little bit of a heads up too about your weather. So this was really just a quick seed starting guide for indoors and transitioning your seedlings from indoors to outdoors. And I just want to touch briefly on planting outdoors because, well, for us right now, it is a little cold right now for us to be planting outside. So I, I just want to touch on how we're going to handle it because we are going to be doing this within the month, but we need to wait for this next. We have like a week of really cold weather and then hopefully we should be good to start planting a lot of seeds outside. But the main thing when planting seeds outside is to make sure, especially for root crops, 
such as carrots, beets, turnips, things like that, you really wanna make sure that they are getting constant moisture. That is the most common issue that people have whenever they are germinating seeds. If you are not having a good amount of success, it is most likely because you're letting them go dry too much. So either having a sprinkler out there that is providing some moisture every day for them, or you know, going out there and hand watering, however you wanna do it. You just need to make sure that you are checking in on them, making sure that they are staying really moist. It's also important too for these, we've had a lot of issues with cats, especially in the past, like walking over our beds while we're trying to germinate seeds. So before they come up, if you find that little critters are, you know, knocking your seeds around, you can place just a little, little, you know, strap of like burlap or um, just something on top of it. And we've also put like some hardware remesh sitting on top of it just to make sure it doesn't either blow away or get scratched up. And that way it helps make sure that your seeds stay in place and you can still water through it. All you need to do is just make sure that you do take it off though whenever your seeds start to come up because you do not want those seeds to not have access to the sun. It's really important. And after that, if you are still having issues with pests messing with your seeds while you're trying to germinate them outdoors, we have loved the motion activated sprinkler and it has been super helpful in the past for us. It is amazing. We All we do is we hook this up to a hose, you turn it on, and whenever it senses something or someone, so you need to be careful too when you go out there, either turn it off before you walk out in the garden, um, so don't forget. Um, it has gotten us quite a few times, but anytime anybody will walk by or anything, it will go off and it will scare whatever critter it is and hopefully not wanna come back to that spot again. And we have found it really helps those areas that we put that motion activated sprinkler by and it really protects that area. I hope that this helped you get some tips and tricks for starting your seeds. And hopefully you are motivated to go start your own. I know it makes me want to go start like every seed that I have at, in, inside the house right now, which I probably am gonna go get some more started. I think I need to get some more going. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And thank you so much for having me today. And I hope that we will see you again on our social media sites. We are very active on YouTube, posting a lot of videos very similar to this and Instagram and Facebook. All you need to do is search for From Seed to Spoon and you'll find us. Thank you so much, you guys.